Traditionally, a lot of packet radio activity uses connected mode. Two TNCs form a bidirectional link between each other. As long as the connection lasts, they make sure that all data gets delivered correctly in both directions. If some transmissions get lost due to weak signal or interference, those lost parts will be retransmitted automatically. This type of connection is often used to log on to BBSs and mailboxes and things like that. In this video, I'm going to show how to use a Linux-based packet radio station both to make outgoing connections and also handle incoming connections. It follows on from my previous video about unconnected mode operation, so if you've arrived in the middle, you may like to watch that first. Let's jump in. Here I am, logged on to my Raspberry Pi with packet up and running. I know that Danny VK7HDM has a BBS running, so I'm going to connect to it. I'm going to use the AX call program. I'm going to use the radio port VHF and VK7HDM9 is the call sign of the station I want to connect to. As soon as I press enter, it's going to go ahead and try to establish that connection. The two computers are now having a chat to each other. A connection is established and the BBS at the far end starts sending me chunks of information. In this interface that's popped up, the large top section shows data I've received, the small rectangle down the bottom is where I can type. It doesn't actually transmit what I've typed until I press enter. So as you can see it's given me a bit of information, um, a bit of a menu here. I can view some system information by running the I command. So I'll press enter. We can see this BBS is running on a Raspberry Pi 3B. There's some paging, press enter for more information. Excellent. Most of these uh, traditional packet radio systems let you exit by using the buy command with a B, so that's what I'm going to use here. B. The BBS terminates the connection from the far end, AX call quits immediately and dumps me back at the terminal. Let's have a bit of a closer look at what just happened and also show how to end a connection from inside AX call. In this top terminal, I'll run AX listen to monitor all the incoming and outgoing packets individually. In the bottom, I'll connect to the BBS again. Right at the start, we can see the connection handshake. It's kind of like TCP IP except there's only two frames. A connection request begins with a set asynchronous balanced mode packet, or SAVM for short. Then the other side sends a UI frame, an unnumbered acknowledge. And that means that the connection is now active. After that we see frames that contain information, which are marked with an I, and receive ready frames that acknowledge the information was received here as an RR. Information frames have a sequence number, which repeats in a small cycle. Here is frame 0, here is frame 1. OK, I am ready to receive frame 2. If a number gets skipped, the station knows that it missed one and it will ask for it to be retransmitted. Now I'm going to manually end the connection inside AX call. Down here in AX call, I'm going to hold down the control key and tap the right square bracket. That brings up these menus on the top. I can navigate these using the arrow keys but this one connect is what I want. If I press enter, it pops down and I can go down to exit and press enter. AX call exits and behind the scenes the connection is torn down. We can see that uh, my station sent a disk frame and then this was acknowledged by the BPS, again sending an unnumbered acknowledge. Before I move on, let's do one more experiment. If you're a Linux user, you may be familiar with the old netstat command. I say old because it's technically deprecated now. Its job is to show active sockets, which includes things like network connections. If I run it with the AAX25 option, it will show me if there's anything happening in packet land. So let's try that. Next at AAX25. Right now, there is nothing. So in the other terminal, I'm going to connect to the BBS one more time. Now that the connection is established, I'll run netstat again. This time we can see that yes, there is a connection currently active to the destination VK7 
HDN9, and that is established. The main thing I want to demonstrate here is that this connection to the BBS is not internal to AX Call. It's really being managed by the underlying Linux system, which is why it shows up in Netstat. With this in mind, here is yet another way to close a connection. There is a utility program called AX Control that lets me kill an ongoing connection that I specify. I'm going to run AX Control, the HF, the radio. I have to specify both ends of the link. It's to VK7 HDN9, VK7 NTK1, and I want to kill this connection. I'll press enter. The connection was torn down, and over in the other terminal, AX Call decided to bail out. Running Netstat again confirms that that connection is gone. Note that AX Control Kill does actually send a disconnection frame, so the BPS hasn't been left hanging. It knows that I hung up. One last thing on connecting. If you want to connect via a Digipeter, just add the Digipeter call sign on the end. You could add more of these if you want, and AX Call will use that Digipeter path to connect. So that's how you connect to other packet radio stations from Linux. But what if you want to receive incoming connections? Maybe I'd like to offer an interactive program like a BBS. Maybe I'd like to give them a shell so that they can run their own Linux commands over the radio. Terrifying, isn't it? You're not allowed to use any encryption on amateur radio, so be aware that any passwords that get typed are going to be visible to literally everyone. But you know, that sounds kind of fun, so let's try to do that. Just for a moment, forget about radios. Suppose you want to receive TCP connections on a Linux system, like normal, perhaps over Wi-Fi or the internet. The modern way of doing this is that you run a program. The program is written specifically to create a TCP server. For example, this program might be something like an FTP server. When it runs, it binds to TCP port 21 and starts listening for connections. It is entirely possible to write an equivalent program for Linux that listens for AX25 packet connections. When a connection request comes in, instead of receiving a remote IP address and port number, it instead receives a remote call sign and SSID. I have done this before. I had to write code in C and it got kind of involved. Fortunately, there is an easier way. Once more, forget about packet radio. Imagine you have some program that was never designed to be used on a network. You type your commands with the keyboard and it gives you text responses on the screen. For example, a Linux shell or many command line tools. One day you think to yourself, it would be super handy if you could share this program over the network. You could do this using a generic server called inetd. You set up a rule. For example, if a connection comes in on TCP port 1234, run a copy of this particular program. While it's running, any data that comes in over the TCP connection is sent to the program as if it was typed on the keyboard. Anything that would normally be displayed on the screen is instead redirected out over the network connection. Using INETD isn't very popular nowadays, but hopefully you agree this is kind of cool. Here we have a program that doesn't know the first thing about TCP, but by combining it with INETD, it becomes possible to use it over the network. Maybe you see where I'm going with this. There is an equivalent of INETD for packet radio. Naturally, it's called AX25D. We can set it up so that when an AX25 connection request comes in from the radio, it will handle it by running a program that we choose. Whatever arrives over the radio is supplied to the program as keyboard input. Whatever the program prints out to screen actually gets transmitted on the radio. The program doesn't have to know about packet radio at all because AX25D is bridging the gap. You could write any program, of course, but for this demo, I want to share a Linux shell where we can run commands. So I'm going to use the Born shell, bin sh. This top terminal is VK7 NTK1, and that's going to be my server computer. First, let's have a look at the AX25D configuration file, etc ax25ax25d.conf. Here, I've already set it up. VHF is the radio that we're going to be listening on. VK7 NTK1 is the uh, call sign and SSID that we're listening on. And there's a lot of things you can configure in here, but I'm only using the very basics. Guest is the name of the Linux user that the program will be run as. 
slash bin slash sh is the path to the program that's going to be run and following that are any of the arguments that are going to be passed to the program. It's conventional that a program will be passed its own name as the first argument. With this file set up, I will run AX25D and it will disappear into the background ready to do its job. This bottom terminal is a second computer with its own radio, VK7 NTK2. I'm going to use it to connect to the first computer. Instead of AX call, I'm going to use a slightly different program here, AX25 underscore call, and I'll explain in a minute why that is. For the moment, let's run it. AX25 call, VHF, and this one I have to use slightly different parameters. I have to specify that I am VK7 NTK2, and I'm connecting to VK7 NTK1. Now, as you can hear, some stuff is happening, and I'm already connected. I can run a command, and it gives me a response. I am, in fact, running a shell on my Raspberry Pi as user guest. Super cool. When I'm done, I can type exit and the connection ends. This is basically how to use AX25D to handle an incoming connection with a program of your choice. Now, why did I use this other program called AX25 underscore call instead of AX call? The reason is line endings. There are two ASCII characters normally used for line endings, a line feed, which is number 10, and a carriage return, which is number 13. Windows systems use CR, then LF at the end of a line. Unix systems and recent Macs use just an LF. Really old Macs before OS X used just a CR. Back in the 80s when packet radio was invented, before all these newfangled computers existed, by convention they used this third option, a single carriage return at the end of each line. To this day, if you connect to a packet radio BBS or mailbox or something like that, it expects to receive a carriage return every time you press enter. The AX call program that I showed first is designed to handle this. Even though I'm using a Unix system, whenever I press enter it will automatically change it to a carriage return before transmitting it on the radio. The problem is, if the program at the other end is a Linux shell, it won't run any of our commands because it doesn't realise we've pressed enter. The AX25 call program is much simpler than AX call and it doesn't do any translation of line endings. This is useful because I'm using a Unix system at both ends. They both understand line feed characters. So I can type a command like ls, press enter, and the shell at the other end will realise that I've finished entering my command and list my files. To recap, in this video I have explained what AX25 connections are and shown how to create outgoing connections on a Linux system using the program AXCall. I showed three different ways of ending a connection, along with the netstat and AXcontrol commands. I also showed how to configure AX25D to handle incoming connections by running a program of your choice. If both systems are Unix systems, you may want to use AX25Call instead of AXCall. That's all for now. Have fun and 7.3.